Hey everyone, Mr. Sugeno here. In today's Best Emulators on Android video, we're going to talk about how to get Sega Dreamcast on your Android device. Let's get started. Alright, so the emulator that I recommend is called Recast or Raycast, depending on how you pronounce it. This emulator, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S5, and I would recommend that as the very baseline phone to use. I would highly recommend something better than a Samsung Galaxy S5. If you have older hardware out there, your phone may struggle to run this emulator. You know, we're not talking about an NES or a Game Boy or an Atari or anything like that. We're talking about a freaking Sega Dreamcast here for emulation. It's a more powerful system to emulate and therefore usually requires a bit more horsepower under the hood of your phone. Now, also to note, Raycast or Recast doesn't necessarily run every single game out there. It runs a lot of games. It will run even more games in the future. But just remember that this emulator itself is currently actually usually almost always undergoing some sort of improvement and will be more compatible with more games in the future. So if it doesn't emulate your game right now, uh, hold tight and maybe in the future at some point it will emulate your video game. So Recast is available on the Play Store. However, this is one of the very, very few apps that I recommend actually not going to the Play Store to install. I usually stick with apps that are on the Play Store as there's a better chance that they're not packed in with anything bad that you don't want to install on your phone. As always, going outside of the Play Store carries a risk that there may be some, for example, malware or something like that bundled in with the app that you don't know about that you wouldn't necessarily want to put on your phone. So there's always a risk of that. I find that this is a safer bet if you go outside of the Google Play Store to get, but as always, there is a risk, so I just wanna say that right up front. Now, the reason why I don't install the one from the Play Store is it's actually out of date. So you can install it, try it out. If it actually runs, great, absolutely great. That's amazing. Don't worry about going outside of the Play Store. However, if there are issues with it, um, then you will probably have to go outside the Play Store to grab a different version. Because you can see here, this version was last updated February 27th, 2014. So over three years ago. Now I go to raycast.com here. I click on downloads. I go down to the unsupported builds and I get my APK from here. There is a warning. They say these are bleeding edge development builds that are used for testing and debugging purposes. They might be unstable or refuse to run. They ha might have bad performance. Uh, they are not usually made for everyday usage. If you just want to play, head over to the official downloads page and download the stable versions there. So if we head over to the official downloads page, you can see it just brings you back to the Play Store. You can actually click on the APK if you like, but not surprisingly, the link doesn't work. <laughs> so I recommend just going to this builds.raycast.com page. You can just get there by clicking on the downloads uh, tab on the actual Raycast or Recast page. Um, it's usually pretty good. If you are using one of these, download one, um, if it doesn't work or doesn't work properly, try a different version. I find they all generally have the quirks to them. Not every version is the same. So if you find one that works, great, stick with it. And if it stops working or doesn't work, try another version. I mean, there's no harm, no foul, whatever. If it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, and these here, I just downloaded one. You can see it is 4.3 megabytes. So they're not very big at all. All right, so once you've downloaded your APK, put it on your phone, run it from your phone, and install it. Once it's on your phone, open it up, and you'll be able to select where the BIOS file is, if you need a BIOS file, or where your game folder is located on your phone. Remember, you will need to transfer the games on the phone, and you will also, in most cases, need a BIOS file from a Sega Dreamcast. Um, some of these apps actually have an included BIOS that works pretty good. So I'm gonna go over now and flip 
to my phone view where you can see the actual emulator in action. All right, so here is the home page per se of the Recast emulator. Um, you can see Boot Dreamcast BIOS and also a game list. On my emulator, I run three games. So not a huge extensive list. Um, don't judge me. <laughs> but basically the three games here, Street Fighter Third Strike, uh, Street Fighter Third Strike, just the Japanese edition, and also my pretty much all-time favorite game, Capcom versus SNK2. So those are the three games that I run on my Dreamcast emulator. And it, it's basically just two versions of one game and then another game. So I guess two games. But anyways, those are the games that I run on my Recast emulator and they all work great. There is some minor screen tearing here and there and it's usually fixed by either A, restarting the emulator, or B, just exiting the game and running it again. All right, so now if I go down into settings, you can see the system path, SD card slash DC, and that is where the BIOS folder is located. Now, before we go into any more detail on that, I would like to say that this emulator actually uses the re-iOS BIOS. So you can see here, use re-OS BIOS, and it is turned on. So this emulator version that I'm using has a BIOS included. And you can see here the storage path to my games. So I run my games off of a micro SD card that's plugged into my phone. Uh, I do that because I can buy a fairly large micro SD card, just throw all my ROMs onto it, and then go from there instead of having to worry about the internal space on my phone. So now we'll scroll down here. Um, these are just some basic options. Uh, NTSC J is the BIOS region. I find that one works for when it have the re iOS uh, BIOS selected. Uh, these are just my general settings. Uh, the frame skip value here. So you can actually put a frame skip value if your phone is struggling to run the emulator. Or, sorry, strong, struggling to run the emulator and ROM. You can put a frame skip value in here to help try to speed things up. Uh, that may work. For me, I don't actually need to have it running, so I've got it set at zero. I've actually got the option here to show on screen FPS. So the FPS option is just to show me how many frames per second the game is running at, so I can tell on my phone uh, very easily, and you'll see it when my game is running, if the game is starting to lag or my phone is struggling to keep up to process the game itself. Um, for software rendering, I have it as on, you can have it as off. All of these optimization options, fiddle around with. I highly encourage you to fiddle around with them and just see what works best on your phone. Because you'd be surprised that sometimes just changing one of these options will be night and day running a game. So we'll just scroll down here. You can just see my options that I use on a Samsung Galaxy S5. Again. They may be different depending on what phone you are using. It all, it's really just hit and miss when it comes to your phone and the way you wanna play your game. All right, I'll go back to browser here and I'm going to go into boot Dreamcast BIOS. All right, on the top left here, you can see the FPS counter. Um, you don't normally have to worry about setting the time and date. You can see here the on-screen controls. If you are using a Bluetooth controller, they will be hidden. Um, but basically, I don't necessarily recommend using a uh, Bluetooth or using the on-screen controllers. I do recommend using a Bluetooth controller, uh, just because it's a Dreamcast game and it, you know it's not a simple. They're not necessarily simple inputs for a lot of these games. So I highly recommend using a Bluetooth controller. If you do use the Bluetooth controller again these on-screen buttons will be hidden however just for the purposes of this video I'm just using the on-screen controls um, because I'm lazy and I don't feel like hooking my Bluetooth controller up and going through the menus that way um, anyway you can see here these are the memory cards you can set up different memory cards uh, I highly recommend doing that in order to save games uh, this is a little different because there's not necessarily um, 
save states in all of the versions of the emulator itself. So if you have an earlier version of the emulator, it may not have a save state option. Again, they are building this emulator out. It is just getting stronger and stronger with time, but options are limited. And in this, I do recommend setting up some memory cards uh, within the app itself in order to save your game. All right, so now I'm just gonna go boot up a game and I'll choose Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Just for a demonstration, goes through the whole Dreamcast settings again. So here again, just don't worry about setting the time and date. All right, I don't know how to read any of that, so we'll just keep going on here. <laughs> um, and you can see the FPS counter in the top running at 57. I generally find it runs between 56 and 60, um, and that's fine with me. If that's an issue for someone else, just put on frame skipping or something on your phone or just fiddle around with the options until it runs perfectly. So I'll just select arcade mode here. Uh, maybe I'll pick Ken. All right, so you can see the game seems to be running pretty smoothly uh, without issue. Now again, here and there, there is some graphical tearing, um, but you can see the frame counter is pretty good. It's holding at between 56 and 58. You can see at this menu here, frame skipping, you can slow it down or speed it up. Uh, you can limit the frame rate. You can change the options a bit, but again, in game, I find the option menu is pretty limited. Um, the best way to change this is actually to exit the game and do it from the emulator itself before the game's booted up. So I'll exit out of here. I'm gonna quit this game. And I'm gonna try Capcom versus SNK2. So again, it's gonna give me, to set the time and date, again, just skip it. I can't read any of that, but it's loading memory, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see here there is some graphical tearing, just minor. That's not enough to bother me. If it does bother you, feel free to fiddle around with your settings to try to get rid of it. So I'll just select a random team here, Ryu, Ken, and maybe Shinakuma. But you can see here, the emulator's running pretty smoothly. And there we go. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's not too, too much else that I've got to say about this. Uh, try it out with different games. Uh, the emulator itself currently works better and better with each iteration. Um, it's very, very good on Android. If you have a phone that's less powerful than a Samsung Galaxy S5, you may struggle to run this emulator. I would say that's a very baseline phone uh, to judge uh, in order to see whether or not you should be using the emulator. Um, if you have something better than a Galaxy S5, you'll be able to run this probably a lot easier and it'll be a lot smoother. Again, that's all I've got for today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And also, please hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.